on the count of three. One, two. All right, everybody, we are here gathered today <laughs> to discuss what was very briefly the top grossing movie when it opened and then was immediately overtaken, I think, internationally by The Nun. <laughs> We're going to wow. talk, we are going to talk about Predator. I am Sly uh, in both nature and handle. J-Bell here. Yeah, we got J-Bell sitting to my right. There he is. Isn't he sexy? Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, what we're going to be doing, talking about the Predator, um, where to start? I think I know where we're going to end, but I, uh, but where to start, I guess, how about, what did you What did you think of the movie, J-Bell? Um, you know what? This was not the movie I, I thought it was. <laughs> I, I heard maybe not good things about it going into it so mm -hmm. i tried to keep an open mind that it wasn't right. going to be exactly what i wanted it to be uh maybe just appreciate what they were giving me but I, what i found was a, a jumbled mess of a movie that really felt like it was an early draft of a script rather yeah. than a finished polished product now, i later learned that that was not the case yeah, well, see, that's what I find intriguing is what you were just telling me about uh, about the script leaking. Yeah. Because I had seen, um, you know, the reports about that huge, huge rewrite that apparently was, I, I had seen was much more substantial than anybody knew or thought to begin with. But I didn't know the reason. I had no idea there was this huge, this huge leak so, beforehand. So to put everyone on the same page, what I what I heard from reading a couple articles and seeing some other people's videos about it, it was too many for me to, to cite them unless I, I give you the, the, the coordinates to go get those. Um, a long time ago, the script for this movie leaked. Mm -hmm. And in response to that, Fox went back and added a bunch of stuff by reshoots, rewrote significant portions of the movie, and screened the movie a lot to try and figure out some way to, to add some spice back into the movie. Right. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. We're talking about the Predator here, right? I mean, it's uh, like, yeah. it should have been kind of spicy by its nature. Yeah. Right? <laughs> let's, I mean, let's just go, go to 10,000 feet. You have you have what you think is going to be, you know, like a, a late summer hit. It's right. going to be a movie where people are going to be going and just eat some popcorn and watch some heads explode. <laughs> right. Uh, why would you reshoot this? Like, you're, yeah. you're trying to make the most money off of, like, really not giving much more than, you know, watching a, an international, an, an intergalactic boxing match, right? Like, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's how they set it up, for sure. And, and that's like, uh, to me, that's where the movie kind of, kind of shined was when they stopped all that ridiculous nonsense and just like laid out and said all right this is predator let's let's do it yeah let's uh let's pick up a bunch of giant alien weapons <laughs> that we somehow know how to use and start fighting you know what so let's i think you were higher in the movie so why don't you why don't you take it and why don't you tell us what what shined for you about the movie and maybe, maybe I'll, I'll give you a couple positives too right okay yeah so for me i I came out of there actually pleasantly surprised. I went in assuming I was going to watch trash. Okay. okay. And uh, and I went in and I was really entertained. I thought it was hilarious. I thought there were a lot of really, really funny parts. Um, and uh, I thought it did a really good job like lampooning the genre and itself, <laughs> frankly. Because a lot of the times I was laughing. I don't think I was laughing at it. I, I was, in fact, laughing with it. Um, and uh, I mean, we can go go into the you know the individual parts I thought were hilarious. Some of the jokes I probably am not going to repeat uh, <laughs> for, for YouTube or any other any public venue. But uh, but I thought it was pretty well done. I thought the action was really cool, yeah. especially when you had the big guy okay. come in because that's what I feel like this movie was really supposed to be about in the first place. I mean, right? It's the notion that the predators have been building their race up by genetically altering themselves which is an interesting idea in and of itself but if i if my criticism of it is that I, I that's the one thing i left the movie not really understanding at the end of it i mean not that i understand genetic splicing anyway sure. it's, it's not 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 like that's that's somehow a topic sure, i'm sure, i'm very sure. good with but 
it was a cool idea that they just never really fleshed out other than somehow this guy is a he- just a huge hulk of a of a predator with Apparently, if I understand correctly, armor underneath his skin. Well, I think if I remember when she with Olivia Munn, it did very well in the movie. She she said like he grew it on the spot, mm-hmm. like it was a uh, man. This is a weird poll. If you ever saw X Men First Class, yeah. there's a character Darwin. Right, right. They had a sequence, an actually pretty fun sequence, where mm-hmm. they were. He was like, "Look, you can do all this stuff to me." Yeah, I yeah. kind of imagine he like had the ability to adapt to all this stuff because he had extra. Him, yeah, I, guess. I mean, I I thought the I thought that character, like the animation, um, mm-hmm. animation, the the CG yeah, effects yeah. with it, I thought were really good. Like when I, he first came out, I was terrified of this thing. Yeah, I mean, not in a suspenseful terror kind of way, but I mean, I, it was a really visually impressive character. It's when they showed him like looming over yeah. the other predator. No, well, I'll definitely um, give you that. Uh, there were there were some shots I thought were a little dodgy. I mean, it's only like an $88 million movie allegedly. I think that's right, what right. The, the budget was. And I think I think the, the effects were not great. There's some mm-hmm. places where those dogs were terrible. Like, <laughs> oh, those doggies. Yeah, but when those, those doggies. Look at that. Get into that. But when like when the predator came out, and especially the big one came out, mm-hmm. man, that that was I remember thinking like, oh boy, that that one, the other guy was a problem, but this guy is a menace. Like, oh yeah, this guy really is. Uh, he's the Michael Myers of the movie. Like, <laughs> right. He walks in, somebody's getting their head cut off, or they're getting thrown through a wall or something. And mm-hmm. I think that's he was an effective opponent for the cast of characters, which I. I, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I, I did like those characters, and you mentioned not laughing at the movie, but laughing with the movie. Right. I, for one, was also laughing with those characters with mm-hmm. the movie. But when they were getting killed off, you you have that feeling of like, I don't want these guys to get killed. I want to see more from them. But I didn't want them to be killed in this movie. I, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I wanted them yeah, in yeah. another movie. Yeah. Like they, they really did a good job of being like this miscreant, misfit group. And in the movie theater, you said it's like it's like they're the eighteen. I know, that is exactly how I felt sitting there watching it. Because yeah. during the course of this movie, I don't really know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but (laughs) there were multiple times where I felt like I was watching the makings of older movies, or it had the components of older movies, like like the A-Team, for instance. I was like this this ragtag group. I'll bring up the picture again of these guys. Speaking of which, I I thought the way they cast these dudes actually was really good, because it's got something for everybody, depending on what kind of entertainment you've been into in the last decade so like for instance you've got if you're an hbo person you've got game of thrones guy right there <laughs> you know if you watch key and peel you got key in there if you uh watch sci-fi channel or remember the old uh punisher movie you got the old punisher in there oh that's right thomas jane yeah, yeah man I forgot, I forgot he was the punisher back in yeah the day. he looks a little different yeah i mean he well he he looked really different um i don't know if you ever watched uh, the sci-fi show the expanse um, I never did. No. He was in it. It was really good, but oh. yeah, he looks total. I mean, he looks like ill. Wow. I mean, I'm, and I'm thinking. I, I hope it's not true in his personal life. I hope it was just a character, but he looked looked very ill. I mean, Gaunt. I will say that. In, in this movie, he looked like he was he was either on something or yeah. using the bottle. Yeah, but and, and you know what? It worked. That's the thing with the casting. I think it worked so well because you know they played him. He was the guy with Tourette's. Yeah. Right, and he did a pretty good job, my understanding, of depicting <laughs> what people with Tourette's do, which is, I mean, they don't just blurt out nonsense, right. generally. They're blurting out generally something that you normally would not say mm, that I pops see. into your head. I like, see. jeesh, you're pushy. <laughs> um, which was... See, that was, okay. that was a, that interaction, between their interaction on the bus and their interaction in the hotel, yeah. I thought well, the way they bounced between each other and with Olivia Munn as well, I thought was hilarious. And, and uh, it was like that line or just those god-awful jokes. I know they're so juvenile, but I couldn't stop laughing. Like, it's the what's fact the difference? they told but, you they were juvenile. Yeah, well, it's they like... They were trying to be funny. They are like, these guys are... 
These, this is not funny. Look how bad this is. <laughs> and it worked, man. It really did. It, it felt there. Was, there's definitely a scene or two. Right, I, I definitely leaned over to you and I was like, the only thing missing from this is is the red light and uh, playing, blasting Little Richard over this. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Be, like, the first yeah. Predator or something. Uh-huh. And, okay, so I agree with you. I kind of wish they were in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, there were too many players. There were too many characters. Right. And, like, I can't tell you what that British guy's deal was. I know mm-hmm. he had some kind of deal. Why he was part of the, the miscreants, I can't remember what their name was. Mm-hmm. But like they needed to cut some of these characters out. There were there were conspicuous additions to the cast yeah. that didn't have anything to do, or right. they had like ridiculous reasons for being there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the British guy is like, the first one that comes to mind. But I wish that this cat these cast of characters could have been in like a in Indiana Jones kind of quest movie. Like, right, right. Like these guys could have been a great supporting cast in Uncharted movie. Yeah. These guys could have been a great supporting cast. Even if you wanted to keep it as like a sci fi movie, like one of those those uh not off brand but like not necessarily like a Star Wars movie, but like they make movies that are kind of like here goes a, a weird cast of characters in a weird setting. That would have been great for these guys. Yeah. The predator coming along and just offing these guys, I didn't want to see that. And not in a horror sense. Yeah. I just didn't want to see it happen. Yeah, well, it's like once it started, it was like a domino effect. Once they started yeah. dying, holy crap, they were all dead. It like did not by, take and, long. Yeah, it did not it did not take very long for all those dudes to get ice, which was unfortunate, because they did it, it would have been cool for them to build on yeah. to, to do another for for once have a predator movie that maybe had the same characters in the next one. Yeah. You know, maybe you don't just start from scratch. You yeah. actually have a continuing thing. Well, it, it felt like this is the beginning of their adventure. Yeah. This was not the end of their story. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I mean, the least interesting of that crew of characters was the main character. Right. And his, like, the family issues that I did yeah. not care about. Uh, yeah, again, isn't that, doesn't it feel like it's just straight out of other action movies like how often has that trope been played out the family man who's estranged but he's trying to win back his family and he's got a heart of gold yeah and he'll break the rules to do the right thing it's yeah. like Dude. i mean i mean i i don't know yeah I, I definitely thought that was a weak a weak point but at the same time with the direction that movie went in so many other ways i don't know if they did that intentionally to make fun of the fact that that is a trope in those movies because they did that kind of crap so often i i can't remember if i said it to you it was like right off the bat uh, there were a couple things i thought were hilarious okay. that were subtle okay. first i think they were it seemed like they were making fun of the fact in so many of these movies they are extremely testosterone sure. heavy um so when olivia munn is first introduced in the movie she's like she's just walking around and this dude, you know, comes in on a chopper. Of course, they got to come in on a chopper. Of course. They had to use that line to oh, of get course. to the freaking choppers. Yeah. That, well, that was an eye roll. That, you know what? That was eye roll worthy, just like in the second Star, Star Trek movie when he went, Kah! <laughs> I was like, no, no. no you didn't yeah. that. No. But, um, but when the guy, I don't think we ever gave this individual a name. Whoever this government dude was that came up to Olivia Munn and was just like, just started barking at her. It's like, you like looking at stars, don't you? <laughs> and it was like, okay. Yeah. She said nothing. Yeah. She said no words. He was like, follow me. We're going to go do such and such. She still said nothing. You know, the first time we ever heard a word come out of her mouth was, that? was when she walked into the, <laughs> there's another, another throwback, an Independence Day style Area 51 bunker with the with the predator in it and she finally says a word and I was like that was it was so noticeable noticeable to me I felt like it had to be intentional it's like here's the woman of course the woman has no lines yet we don't even give her a name if, if this movie had been a little smarter, maybe maybe I would appreciate that it's like kind of a deconstruction of that right but like you're you're right and in a movie where some of the characters are so poorly written uh, or so one-dimensional, uh, while some, some are very entertaining being one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. It, it is so weird to do, like, did you get anything from her being on campus when they picked her up? Right. Did you get anything from her, like, 
not being aware of things to start with. Mm -hmm. Like we've all seen Predator before. We all know what this is about. You don't have to introduce all this stuff to us. Yeah. She could have just been like a specialist they brought in that was like part of the team already. Mm -hmm. For her to like need to be brought up to speed and I have heard some stuff about this, so I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but like Lily Munn picks up her character picks up like this this air rifle <laughs> dart gun thing and like she's, she's like ready to rock and roll and I'm, I'm fine with like a character being savvy enough to do that yeah like, like a sigourney weaver pull all of a sudden she's just a badass waving an assault rifle i'm, I'm perfectly fine with a character yeah. doing that but like, it wasn't a normal gun like it's right. one thing for you to be like well look she's seen movies she's like smart she can figure out it yeah like they were in some sort of like big science lab with stuff that probably only exists in this one area uh, yep. and she, you know, but maybe this is the kind of rifle that's always used when when you have like animals you need to subdue or whatever mm -hmm. but it was just like this would have worked so much better if if she was part of this science team beforehand you could have cut out like 10 minutes of nothing from this movie mm -hmm. rather than give her a backstory that ultimately didn't matter yeah. Her character at all. Yeah, well, that's the, what you were saying about that about the equipment. That that is one thing that I I felt like they were making fun of because it is so common in these kind of movies. It yeah. in that scene in particular when they were when they all show up at that bunker, you know, Area Fifty One. I was like, this could just as easily been ripped out of the first Independence Day movie because oh, it's yeah. exactly oh, the way yeah. it played out it, yeah. everything's in white is lit really bright everything's white all the walls everything's white they're just a bunch of dumb looking scientists standing around yeah. that you know talk like a bunch of dumb hippies they don't yeah. even I, I, they, none of them seems qualified to be yeah. doing what they're doing all he was bring was data just yeah. <laughs> but, and the whole and while we were sitting there because of course they had the predator just laid out on a table and yeah. some basic cuffs you know, holding him down. I remember thinking, I bet you there's no way they gave this fool enough sedatives to keep him asleep. Of course Because, not. of course, yeah. these scientists are too stupid to figure that out. Yeah. And I was just like, he's going to tear this place up, just like in Independence Day, where they all, you know, all walk in, the thing gets loose, murders them all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I'll, but, but I, I do have to hear what I'm going to give it a plus. Yeah. When that predator got loose, mm. oh boy, it was killing those dudes. It was yeah. flaming these scientists and right. these guards. It was like, it was as gruesome as you think it should be. Yeah. For the first predator doesn't have a ton of gore. Right. When it does, it's memorable. Blowing the chest out of just the body, mm. cutting up Carl Weathers' arm. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, or, or even like, you see like the body strung up. Like, it is... It is horrifying. It's not entertaining to see this stuff. You're, right. It is an oh no moment. Mm -hmm. And in that lab, when that predator gets loose, boy, it's bad, man. Right. I mean, he's he's impaling people and shoving things where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> it's bad. And, and, like, and it definitely sets up like these guys are overmatched. Mm -hmm. This is this is a real problem for everyone. Just, you know, everyone's going to be in the path. This right. What well, you want to explain to me? What the point? of making Olivia Munn get naked was? Okay, so I, I thought, thought that was... I thought that, that was entirely inappropriate for, right. the, movie, for, the, for like the movie that it was... In the 80s, you could count on like a rated R movie to just be like, and here goes a naked chick. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, maybe it's not even a character. It's just like... Like, like in, in a cop movie, movie like... A cop will kick the door in, and, and there'll be like, like a girl just standing naked, like, ah! <laughs> boobies! <laughs> like, since, like, the internet happened, you don't really have to do that to see, you know, naked people. You right. Just, like, at the touch of a button, you can see, you know, a, a person naked. And, yeah. Like, it's not hard, right? Mm. So, movies don't... Well, like, funny you sitting down. <laughs> I had to go there. So, so, so like, movies don't really do that anymore. So, so when you have like living one get naked and it like oh don't worry folks it's, it's not like on screen nudity it's like yeah it's I mean at least they didn't that was the one thing I thought at least they didn't show it like sure. you you saw her from like the clavicle up right. <laughs> which, which is even weirder like, which is exactly what begged the question for me is like 
Why do it? Yeah. I mean, I get the decontamination nonsense that's been in so much. And again, I felt like they were making fun of it. How many times in sci-fi movies people walk through a chamber and it sprays out some <laughs> gas? Oh yeah, all yeah. the viruses and bacteria are yeah, dead, you're totally which would fine. mean you'd be dead if it killed all that. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like they were making fun of that trope. It's like you walk in and you know, but in this case, you had to get naked first. Right, right. It was like okay, yeah, we're making sure that the audience realizes yeah, how just how stupid yeah. this idea, this concept of de- decontamination really is. Yeah, it, it was weird, man. I didn't. I, 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 I don't, don't get the point necessarily. Maybe they really were trying, trying to do a bunch of. of deconstruction on this yeah. um, but uh, you mentioned the lab that also reminds me I got really excited when they got Jake Busey to play the son of <laughs> Gary Busey's character Tease from Predator 2 was I was pumped for that yeah. and he's like barely in the movie yeah it's non-existent a complete waste and, and I, I think you're meant to think the character gets killed so it's not like you were you were setting up and like oh stay tuned folks he's going to be back for, for part two of the story right it was just another one of those wasted cul-de-sacs of, of ideas in this film right like, I mean the genetic the genetic splicing deal I'm not really sure what that really added except for a reason to bring the kid to it I don't think we're ready to get the kid yet. Yeah, we'll get to that maybe in a little bit. I will say with the genetic splicing, something that I found bizarre was with the dogs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So with these doggies, unmistakably, they've got the head plate of the traditional predator. They got the pred dreads, right? The same skin, everything. Do you mean to tell me that they bred their genes... With a goddamn four-legged dog. Okay, so two two points here. First point: that pre- that dog is not the same dog from Predators. Yeah. Which this movie, I think, conspicuously ignores. Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Let's set that aside. They don't look like the like the original dogs from Predators from 2010, I think it was. Yeah. Which I thought that was weird because those dogs are great. Yeah. Two. With all the talk of genetic splicing and hybrid creatures and whatnot, mm-hmm. did that used to be a predator? And it like somehow morphed into this dog. Yeah, I tell you, the, the concept, the more I thought about it afterwards, the concept of it was really unsettling. <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. Because I was just thinking, can you imagine if we did that? Say in some future oh, where you spliced a human with a dog oh, and it was God. like this four-legged creature that had a semi-human face and like long luscious locks like a vintage steven seagal <laughs> it, like i would run away from this thing whether or not it barked Dude, it would terrify me that's just the way it worked. fuel it's from like that's something out of like video drone or like a, <laughs> or like an hr guider concept like, right right that's a that is pure nightmare fuel. No, you're dead. Yeah. I didn't think about it like that. Just that's, the, the idea of it just blew my mind. Like, why? Why would they do? That? I didn't <laughs> even get it. And, okay, and okay. So some of the predator stuff is like super effective. Like, yeah. like their their ships seem to be really badass. Their their armor apparently is really nice now. Like their blades cut through everything. Yeah, those dogs were not like super great. No. Like. All but one got killed, and that one was the son of a bitch. Like, he stuck yeah. around forever. Mm. Points to him. That was a great running gag throughout the movie. An almost unsettling, unsettling running gag about this, this dog that wouldn't die. Very weird, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, uh, I'll give them points for that one. But, right. like, overall, the dogs didn't really add anything to no. the film except for, like, kind of a, a weird sight gag, mm. recurring joke, and, again, just a reason to get from point a to point b to set up the final set piece right yeah that that's really all it was um which is unfortunate because you could have done a lot of cool shit with that i think it could have been really neat with the well, with a dog but maybe, maybe make it look a little less like a predator that was weird. maybe that was just that, was weird. that direction creeped me out like yeah. why in the hell would you do that yeah and i don't think they even look great like yeah. as, as like like computer generated beasts i don't think they like they didn't look as good as like uh yeah, the only two things I can think of, like the parademons from the from the Justice League movie. Right. Like I don't think they looked they were a great representation of parademons from the DC universe, 
but they were like clearly monsters and I could tell what they were and I didn't want to see them on screen mm. and like those uh, I can't remember what they were called but the, the things from Infinity War like, I, like they looked yeah yeah like they looked gnarly mm-hmm. and I didn't they were monsters yeah and you know they were they were vicious and nasty and I didn't want my characters to be killed by them. <laughs> yeah, right. these things showed up and I was like what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> and and like how easily how easily swayed were these beasts yes like like yes <laughs> dumb as dirt because that's the thing I was thinking is the whole the whole time they were pitching this idea that the predators were splicing together dna for like the most advantageous yes. traits yes why is this dog dumb as dirt like why is it as dumb as our dogs where you just like throw something and it plays fetch yes like <laughs> yes. what what possible genetic benefit did this animal get <laughs> that's that's the only way i could make sense out of it. if you had like a hunting dog and i, I assume if your entire culture is around hunting yeah. you would have like dope hunting dogs right but like at some point you had like a predator that was like bad in his job or yeah, yeah. or maybe like a predator that like committed some like crime yeah. so you're like for, and so now you are stripped of your honors as a hunter and now you will become a hunting dog <laughs> <laughs> that's true like, the ultimate punishment like like it, it, it like it didn't work because these things aren't really yeah. dogs like they, they used to be people they're, they used to be dogs now they're like something in between and it just doesn't quite work like it's supposed to <laughs> this, this is your punishment and now you will pick up your own poop yeah but it's just uh that was definitely no points for me so yeah zero out of zero for me yeah so i <laughs> trying to think where where should we go next oh i know one thing i wanted to say about the equipment okay um that we were talking about before uh <laughs> so i was just routinely amazed but okay. i i also will say i i was getting the sense it was intentional to kind of make fun of how often it's done in science fiction movies um how people just come across this crap it's clearly alien, yeah. not this world, right. and instantly know how to use it. That's right. I mean, again, let's talk about Independence Day. Kind of similar thing. You know, all of a sudden, I don't know, all Will Smith has to do is reverse the controls. <laughs> down is up and up is down. Man, oh, if these that's scientists all it took. had just had a little common sense, it would have been just fine. But, yeah, but it's like, one, oh, and that was the other thing with the casting I meant to say. So, you know, you had, um, like, if you watch Game of Thrones, you had character from that. Right. You had the old Punisher. Right. You also had, if you watch This Is Us, you had that in there. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, I thought was hilarious at the beginning that I felt like they were very subtly making fun of this style, this genre of movie. Yeah. Where, like, when the, basically, like, the cigarette smoking man, the <laughs> dude behind the curtain, oh you know, is controlling everything, hops out of the copter... And comes up, and instead of like puffing on a cigar or something, he throws in some Nicorette. Nicorette. <laughs> I was Which, like, I thought that was hilarious. That was brilliant. I, yeah. That was legitimately brilliant. And look, if they had, if they had gone full bore mm-hmm. and said, let's just make it like an almost Starship Troopers like parody, RoboCop parody. Yeah. Like, like we're we're going to lampoon society we're gonna lampoon these types of movies these types of setups yeah. the predator itself like like we, like instead of getting someone to like voice the predator and do like the grunts just like pay Arnold Schwarzenegger to do it or Jimmy Glover. <laughs> like just go full right. absurd and have like yeah. have like uh, t- news talking heads about the predator mm-hmm. or, like either you're gonna go full bore like have someone to like turn the predator's ship on and like there's Predator Fox News up and it's got like <laughs> TMZ in one corner, right? right? Like, you, know, you got like you got like a panel of like sixteen predators like arguing back and forth <laughs> and everyone's like, oh God. <laughs> like, like just go and like, go full board. Don't try yeah. and like in in the the reason why I'm like I'm not sure that you, how intentional that was, you had all this other stuff in the movie mm. that appeared to be a genuine attempt at a plot and and, and like themes right Th- things like you had multiple scenes where characters were like hey climate change that's bad <laughs> right and it's so bad that even the predators know it's bad mm-hmm. and they got to get the most out of the planet before we ruin it right and right. i'm like you know what 
you almost had an idea here. And if the movie were some kind of like eco movie about this, mm-hmm. maybe we had something here. Right. But that like, maybe I'm misremembering this. Didn't the first predator come to give us something to combat climate change? And then by the end of the movie, it was like a Robocop suit or an Iron Man suit? Oh, and yeah. Oh, it most certainly was. Yeah, that that was nuts. It basically it was it was like a Predator Iron Man suit yeah. for for us to use. But like which was pretty freaking sweet, I thought. I thought it was pretty ball. I thought it looked kind of cool. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you, but I really thought the the initial idea was the Predator was coming here to save us from like climate change. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe that wasn't right, but I definitely picked it up for the for, for the first time around. So when they pulled out like a suit of armor from the end of it, I was like, mm-hmm. "Why?" In uh, the movie supposes that like in so many years the predators won't even come back. Yeah, like they'll be here a bunch and then they won't be here anymore. Mm-hmm. So why would we ever need this? Yeah, I mean, the, my sense of it when they when they brought that uh, when they showed you that suit was that it was to give us a fighting chance against. You know these behemoths, like that giant, I get that. I get that. giant dude. What was all the climate change stuff? Yeah, I don't. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell. I mean, it was. I feel like that was just something topical right. they wanted to throw in, and I mean, it, it made some was. sense. I mean, it, I, I I get that, and and I almost I almost think they got it wrong by saying they're they're going to do this as much as they can before the, the before it's too bad and they won't come here anymore. Right, right. They should have been like. Look, they really like they really they hunt in the hottest summers. Mm-hmm. And now it's always going to be hot. And now areas that used to be safe from the the scope of the predators, they're going to be everywhere. Right? Like you're never going to get rid of these guys. Yeah. Like a much more like, hey, in 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 1996 when Danny Glover was talking was sweating his ass off. And all that, <laughs> like, yeah, you had a chance then. Maybe if you turned it around, you could have like fought back and secured the planet. But they're just going to be living here now, right? But I mean, I don't think they had enough there to to really cook through that plot. And it was another one of these things that kind of felt like this was from a different movie, or this is something you added in after the fact. Mm-hmm. If you had told me that we were going to have a little kid, a sequence in a high school football stadium <laughs> stadium a field yeah a high school a trick-or-treating situation <laughs> a kid playing in his basement with with the predator gear i would have said hard no i'll see it on dvd mm-hmm. i cannot stand these movies that should be in cool interesting locations with awesome characters that instead are like but what if we just put a little kid in it and set it in your backyard? I don't want to <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. There's certain things that have to be way out there. Mm-hmm. I think I don't think you should be doing alien movies on Earth contemporaneously. Yeah, well, I mean that, and it's not the first time they've done that, right? Which uh, was it an alien or a predator movie, or was it an AVP movie that they did? That was on Earth. Uh, as as like we used to say back in, the day, and back in the day, that'd be Bofo. Bo- oh God! At least one of them was at least in like Antarctica, so it was like a right, far right. Out that was the first fish. AVP movie. The second one was like in some in some like it was in Colorado or something. Right. That's it. That's the one I'm thinking of. The yeah. second one. Yeah. In in like, all right. So I think Predator. This is a word. This is such a. Alien is like about exploration of space and like finding some new horror. So like it can't be on Earth. It shouldn't be on Earth. It shouldn't be far out in space. Predator seems to be about just encountering this monster that's hunting you where you don't want to be and you don't want this thing to come around. So that can be anywhere and it can be anytime. I get that. But why set it in your backyard? Mm -hmm. Like when when you have like in Predator 1, you have these commandos in the jungle. It's a hostile scenario and they can't just like go home. Mm-hmm. They have to like make it somewhere and hopefully enough of them are still alive so they can make it out. Yeah. When they're in LA, the concrete jungle, it's like dangerous and there's there's like an apocalyptic level of crime. So at least it's a cool scenario as far as like 
as bad as the, as bad and dangerous as everything is, this predator is worse. And it's turned it, it's turned a, a terribly imbalanced society that's like pulling it, it up, itself apart at the seam. It's pulling it apart even more. Yeah, yeah. This is just like here are a bunch of assholes and then then some predators. <laughs> yeah, and right. like it's like it's in your backyard. It's in your like if they had done an entire sequence where like. Two predators were hunting each other and trying to and trying to hunt like the special forces guys who were securing like the lab inside this lab in the side of like a uh, a secret installation so like no one can get out. Like then you have some you have some setup and like you have I don't know what a lab like that looks like. I'm mm-hmm. curious about it. It's a hostile situation. Right. They can't just like go outside because there's like a waterfall right (laughs) like you could have done some cool stuff and like track these people around this area or you could just have them run through a school (laughs) exactly (laughs) and and like where i think the movie got its wings and started to actually do some stuff when the guys are like let's go get the guy's son back and let's fight the predator Mm -hmm. like that's where to me the movie actually got off the ground and started going and that's like an hour plus in Oh yeah, you sure. could just cut that garbage out, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe it's just like a pilot for a TV show, like a Netflix show. <laughs> I don't know, but like that's you want more of that stuff. You don't want more of like you you don't you don't ever talk to your son. He doesn't know your faith. Like I don't care about that. <laughs> I don't care what um you know. I like the characters' interaction, and there were times where like the the. the the, the miscreants were were like messing around on the bus, and I was like, I kind of don't want to go back to the predator. <laughs> no. And I'm, well, with the predator, no. I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere else. Like, I don't. Yeah. These things didn't really. I don't want to uh, look. Maybe it is time to get into the special needs stuff, but mm-hmm. like, I don't want to see. If I'm watching a movie about a kid, a family struggling to raise a special needs kid, and mm-hmm. and maybe the maybe the, the uh, father is you know a deployed you know special forces dude, and you know he's having a tough time coming back to the to the states, and and the wife is you know overwhelmed because she's trying to do everything for the family and the son has special needs, and that's a, a, an adventure on its own. That's the yeah. plot to a movie in itself. Yeah, that's like a sequel to her her block. Mm-hmm. I don't want my predator in my hurt locker. You know? like, <laughs> right. That's a real story about like real people and that like probably needs to breathe in its own right. Mm-hmm. What I don't need is some bullies from an 80s movie pushing around a a kid who has maybe autism. Yeah. That that is where I I guess other issues that revolved around that kid that were just kind of not really well fleshed out. Okay. So for starters, like when we were talking about, we started talking about it before, but I, I didn't elaborate on it with the equipment, you know, with uh, dudes just suddenly picking up his crap and knowing how to use it yeah. down to, down to the shoulder cannon being on his shoulder and he's popping off with that thing. Yeah. I'm thinking how in God's name does this dude Ha, ha, ha. I love his laugh. That was how many times in that movie did he do? Ha. He was great. He was so great. It was so ludicrous. It was, I can't and I bet you he came up with that. Like I don't oh, even man. think that was something in the script. He was just like one day on set he was like ha. and people were like what, oh, you gotta do what that did again. you just do? Do that again? Yeah, yeah. But I'm with you on that. Like so even with Olivia Munn with that gun, she's hopping on the roofs of cars, you know using weapons she shouldn't know how to use they at least semi tried to explain why the kid knew how to use some of this stuff because he because he was supposedly the way they said is that he was autistic right Right. that's what they kept saying that he was autistic um and my only thing is i'm not a psychologist but i am married to one and uh that was something because i was telling my wife that they just I, I don't want to criticize the kids acting, but in terms of how they seem to be directing it, yeah. he didn't seem autistic right. at he, all. He and did not write an autistic role for him. No, if anything, he was like a savant. Like this yes. this kid that just like just gets these 
you know, gets this code. Yes. He just like locks in. He he can see patterns and locks in on a code. Yeah. That's exactly. not autism. That's I mean, right. now a- autistic people will sometimes be very strong in a particular area. The yes. so they it's like they started going the autistic route when they showed him like curled up in a ball up against the wall because it you know he was like really sensitive to to yeah. noise or whatever it was. Didn't stick around. No, so that is autistic to a degree, but from there on out in the movie, there was nothing particularly autistic about this kid right. and I that is one thing I meant to say I don't remember if I told you I think it was just bad writing or maybe it was bad acting on the kids parts but when those like two kids came into the the schoolroom and uh what was the line they said something like oh man are we gonna eat some ass burgers yeah. or something like I was like what the what is wrong with these kids? Why do they want burgers made out of ass? Is that, it literally took me until that scene was over to realize, oh, they're talking about ass burgers. Right. Ah, I right. get it. Because you didn't but it was so some nineteen eighties bullies to show up in your red room. Freaking ass burgers. <laughs> I was like I was like, what? That was just it was off putting. Yeah. But only after the fact, because at the time, like in real time, I was like, what the hell are they talking about? about? These yeah. what's wrong with these freaking kids? And that, this is exactly what I mean. This is one of those undercooked things from like a different movie. Right. If if you wanted to make a story about an autistic kid who ends up saving the day, mm-hmm. you can do that. There's yeah. a show. I think I think this was shows about the Good Doctor. Yeah. I think that, I think the doctor is supposed to be the character is supposed to be autistic or on the spectrum. Or something. Yeah. Like you can do that. I think it's a hit show. So clearly, there's like the ability to tell a compelling story like that. Yeah. But. Is that really what you want to be the center of your Predator movie? Mm-hmm. Especially when the big reveal at the end of the movie... All right. Spoiler time, buddy. Spoiler <laughs> time. Yeah. So, I think my man's name is Brian K. Washington. Mm-hmm. Big red bad guy. Yes. Right. Yep. I can't remember his name. He had a funny name in, in the movie. Like, uh, the character's like, name? Like, or, or something. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. He was awesome, by the way. He was one of those guys who's in a good pop thing with good column. Yeah. Who, I don't even know if he was killed in the movie. I don't remember it happening. Um, I think that he was, but I'd have to. I'd honestly have to see it again to verify. Yeah, I I don't know. Okay, so somehow they have the predator ship like corralled, and they've got some like translator, and he's like hook up every download everything off the ship. Cool. Yeah, and the miscreants ambush uh, Brian K. Washington. That's one man's name. Mm-hmm. They ambush his forces, and when everything's been all destroyed and depleted, then the big bad predator shows up and like walks into the, the in, walks into the computer, which still has a translator hooked up to it, and he like sends them a message that's like, "All right, all y'all are dead. I'm coming after y'all. I'm gonna give you eight minutes or something like that." And then there's one amongst you that's a true warrior, McKenna. Yeah. And they've been calling the main the main character yeah. McKenna. So, Blonde haired, blue eyed white boy. Right. So you're, you're meant <laughs> to think, oh, he's going after the main guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sets up your final act. And they're all they're all arguing about how they're supposed to take how they're supposed to handle that. They want to split up and go in twelve different directions or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they end up just saying, "We'll stick together and we'll, we'll fight it out." And we actually have that sequence where the guy puts on the shoulder can and he asks the kid, "How do you do this?" Yeah, because the kids already cracked the code, right? Yeah, and apparently scientists did, which fine, whatever, but dumb. And after the predator is like wiping out everyone, he just nabs the kid and is out. And Olivia Munn basically looks at the camera and is like, no, not you, dummy. You want your son because he's autistic. Because autism is the next level of, the next step in human evolution. That. Which, holy shit. That, that right there, you have, you have encapsulated what, what bugged me. Like, if, if I had to come up with my, my primary criticism of the movie, that was it. 100%. Because they said it m- at least twice yeah. in the movie, yeah. Yeah. they said he's this his his autism. That's that's actually the, maybe the next step in our in human evolution. I'm going. Where exactly are you coming up with that? Right. 
I mean, now, if you wanted to play again, if they did it the way the movie actually played out, and you describe this kid as a savant, m- maybe you could convince me that the Predator saw this kid cracking this code and was just like, you know what? He's got, like, hyper-intelligence. Maybe we could use that with our brute strength, right. you know, even though we're pretty goddamn smart to begin with, I think. Really? Um, but... Yeah, I, I couldn't wrap my head around that big reveal, as you said, this supposed reveal, yeah. that the kid is who they are after. Why? Like, I'm not being, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not downplaying the achievements of people with autism, but it just, it just logically does not make any sense. The idea, yes. I mean, and, and I, again, it goes back to this poorly fleshed out idea of splicing genes. Exactly. How exactly would that work? So, so far, everything we've been shown and told about what the Predators have been doing have been overwhelmingly, like, physical features. Without question. How exactly are you going to get the genes to somehow make you a savant? Right. As far as I know, and I know as human beings, we don't, we haven't cracked the surface of what our genes do but so far my understanding is there's no such thing right there isn't the smart gene right. like that's not i mean i guess there's a dumb gene right. <laughs> there's su- there's such a thing as ha- you know having a ceiling at which you can sure you know gain knowledge but i was like how what are the predator what does the predator think they're going to do with this kid? Right. Rip out his brain and implant it in a predator? Right, right, right. <laughs> Just don't. Well, like, again, 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 the fact that they introduced this like genetic splicing thing, it seems like a a really big afterthought because yeah. it only plays it only comes into play in the movie twice as I see it. Yeah. One being the predator being like so like, physically imposing and having like the the, the extra uh, exoskeleton or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then two saying like, oh, he can, he's, he's going to take the autism and you know, they're going to, they're going to give themselves some kind of like super boost off the autism. Mm-hmm. And it's really the only way it comes into play. It's not a theme throughout the movie. I guess the dog is a movie too. It's, it's, it's the three points. These three points aren't really connected. They don't form a theme. Yeah. It, it would almost seem like it's weird because the predators very clearly take like trophies as hunters. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to add something to like complicate things and involve like putting a, a kid in peril, you could have a kid be a savant, as you said, and you could have the predators say, I'm taking the kid because he's smarter than any human I've ever encountered. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's the smartest human that we've ever encountered as a species. And have the father be like, no, that's my boy. You can't take it. Yeah. And you can even set it up. You can set it up better. Maybe it's not even the kid. Maybe it's Olivia Munn's character. You can have like old predator gear that hasn't been turned on, and have one of the characters. Maybe it's Olivia Munn and the kid together finally crack the code and activate this this predator thing that sends a beacon and attracts the predator down. And he's like, who turned this shit on? I want it. Right. And, and like maybe and he sees it as a kid, so he's like, oh, it's not, it's not prey. Like it's there's no honor in killing this this child, mm-hmm. but there's something here, and I want to study it myself. Yeah, and and like that's not even that's not great, but it's I can't imagine. You know, you know, you're you grew up watching Predator, you saw Predator Two, you love this shit. You come and see Predator, and maybe you're an adult now. And you have a special needs kid, and this movie suggests to you that autism is a superpower. Mm-hmm. How tasteless! Yeah. How completely tasteless this movie was. Yeah. It it was that that was I didn't know how badly I I heard that they had an autistic character that was not portrayed uh, with the proper level of care. Mm-hmm. And and look, it's an action movie. I don't need it to be perfect. I don't need it to be like even politically correct. But that was something that, like, I'd accept a movie made in the mid '90s, maybe to have a, a, the tone like that. Yeah, completely bad. Well, see, it's it's funny because the way they approached the issue was like they were, like they were trying 
really hard or thought that they were yeah. doing a good job yeah. of like spreading the word and opening people's minds yeah. and it's like hey you know stop stop thinking this kid is you know is uh you know special needs or, or whatever he's actually you know the next step in our evolution he's better than all you guys and i'm just like you think you're doing this right you're really not you're really not <laughs> you're really really not <laughs> and i mean here's the thing even if the kid is hyper intelligent in a very narrow way sure. which is how that would generally be it's a very narrow focus right um if you are on that end of the spectrum um so what if the kid is the smartest human is he smarter than the predators if yeah, he's okay. not then who cares how smart he is it doesn't matter just because he's the smartest human why do they give a damn if they're smarter than he is it, it right almost, it almost seemed to posit like okay the kid there are these sequences where the kid like he starts interacting with the predator devices and he's like the way the way they have him portrayed the way they direct him it's like oh i see these patterns i get it now i got it i right. got it and it's like oh we want that mm -hmm. but that's not that's not all there is to this and that's not what this character was outside of these scenes right uh, outside of these very few scenes and look I, I, I don't i don't know maybe there is some like protein you can extract and like juice yourself to give your like yourself a boosted processing capacity or something but this was like a such a weird addition to a movie that didn't need more right <laughs> a movie that was already over complicated when it's just an alien monster coming to kill you that's <laughs> it that's right all the movie's supposed to be <laughs> like, like there are I, I try to explain certain things in certain ways and i'll go to my my johnny cash example mm -hmm. there are symphonies that involve 50 different instruments being played at different tempos and they're playing the harmony and it's it's beautiful, it's wondrous. And there's Johnny Cash on stage behind the microphone, tapping out the beat maybe on, on the guitar and the strumming and not really even singing that great. <laughs> but he's doing his thing to the maximum execution. He's playing that Johnny Cash song in the Johnny Cash way and the way it's supposed to be done. And you put on a Johnny Cash record and you're like, you know what, I really like country, that's cool. I can yeah. take that. Mm -hmm. It's the predator is a is a similar kind of. It's a monster. It's interesting characters. It's a cool setting. Fight. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be about climate change. It doesn't have to be about special needs kids. It doesn't need to be about estranged families. It doesn't need to be about. I mean, oddly, it's somehow also about like soldiers dealing with. The effects of war and PTSD. Oh God! And yeah, like, it doesn't need to be about any of that stuff. And if you're going to bring in some of that, those can enhance the movie and maybe mm -hmm. update it to being you know 2018 or whatever. But you put all of it in a little bit more than it should have been, but not enough to make it interesting. That's true. I, I hadn't really, I, I hadn't counted up all of all of the different like hot button issues yeah. they threw in a lot of them yeah like a ton of them and yeah you're right it was like they, it was in your face but then it just disappeared yeah. for the most part except for except for of course the kid that was <laughs> but, but only the kid becomes the kid's not really in the movie as yeah. like a as part of the plot until like like yeah sure he gets the predator gear yeah he's messing with it but mm -hmm. it doesn't really tie in until like basically every character says Look over there, the kid. Yeah. But like, it's not like he's driving the plot forward. Like, things are happening. But I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, there's a point where I, I forgot there were two predators. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought it was one. Then I thought it was three. And then the one killed the other one. And I was like, oh, is there not a third one? Oh. <laughs> I, right. Like, it was, it was just so all over the place. I, uh, this movie. This movie. Yeah. I don't know. I still, I can't. I still can't dislike what it was in totality, even though there were 
there were a lot of shortcomings. And I was just thinking, you're mentioning um, the dude that had shot himself in the head unsuccessfully yeah. with PTSD, ostensibly. Like, and talk about something in bad taste. How about they made that whole storyline, that, yeah. that character, fairly clear as to what had gone on. Yeah. And then there at the end, I feel like they were setting it up so like the audience wasn't supposed to care as much when this guy died because he sacrificed himself. You know, he sacrificed himself and the, the the idea was like, oh, well, he wanted to die anyway, so who cares? You know, I was just like, really? That's how we're going to play this off? Like, yeah. we're going to give him his opportunity to kill himself yeah. now? Like, that's not really cool. <laughs> not really cool. And I'll be honest, I thought he was the most interesting protagonist character oh i agree in the movie yeah like, to me like in a, in a movie that was properly deconstructing this you would have been introduced to the first character mckenna mm -hmm. and then you would have come and met the actual protagonist this super interesting dude who's got this crew of flunkies yeah and that would have been your way in mm -hmm. so like when you off him in the in the movie i'm like i I, I'm not sure I actually care about this McKenna guy mm. who acted in a ridiculous manner throughout the endangering his family at every step of the way. Oh yeah, for sure. Like the most interesting character was that was was that black dude. Yeah, it was like he was basically the leader of the A team. Yes. Right. Yes. Which I wanted to see the A team in action. Yes. More. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. I mean that that was that was really unfortunate. That it, we were talking about earlier. Is not is, knowing that we're never going to see that group of dudes again. Exactly. There is... There are a lot of bad movies out there. And we've mm -hmm. watched a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. And yep. we've enjoyed a lot of them too. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of movies that we thought were going... That looked cool at the trailer. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe we were like, we're fans of the property. And then we finally see it and we're like, man, that really wasn't what we wanted. Or, you know, that really wasn't too good. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of those you even still have a soft spot for. Right. This movie reminds me of one of our movies that we held and we knew it wasn't good. It wasn't what it was supposed to be. It wasn't what we wanted. But damn it, if it's on TNT, we'll watch it for 40 minutes. <laughs> this movie is the new Doom. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Definitely see that. Yeah, that, yep. that crappy movie with the rock from back in the day. Yes. This is to me, this is the doom of 2018. <laughs> this is a movie that's full of a bunch of weird but kind of interesting ideas. Every one of them is 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 undercooked. There's too mm -hmm. many to spend on too much time, yeah. whether it be evil is a disease. Uh, some of us are born evil. Some of us have the ability to overcome it. There's like maybe some sort of like super gene you could unlock. Mm -hmm. Like uh, all this stuff is like, okay, that's kind of interesting. It's not really what I want in this movie. And if you put this in a different movie, maybe it'd be cool. And there's just enough to be, to get you to, to like kind of enjoy the movie. This is Pred the Predator. Yeah. That's what this movie is. <laughs> but But is it? As they said multiple times in the movie... He's not actually a predator oh because <laughs> he's not hunting for survival. He's hunting for sport. He's a hunting huntsman. He's <laughs> which I, I again I actually really dug that. I like because I I told you I never thought about that before. Yeah, I, it, it, they said it like at least a couple times in the movie, and I was like, good point. Yeah, he's not a predator. You're <laughs> very you're very correct. And again, <laughs> where this movie shines is yeah. the humorous interaction between the characters. And the kind of decon the actual deconstruction of the tropes and the movie, the, the source material, mm -hmm. and that's to me that like to, that's that's what the movie should have been doing the whole time. It right. should have been it should have been like a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of deal where right. or, or you know, you're going to go old want to go old school like a Hogan's Heroes or Kelly's Heroes kind of deal mm -hmm. where you're like oh look at these assholes but they have a job to do and <laughs> they're kind of like poking fun at each other right like that's what this movie should have been it shouldn't have been it should have been what it was well so we are basically at an hour okay but i know you had you said what the movie should have been okay you have an idea i do you how how long do you think or how how quickly can you elaborate on your idea for what it should have been i i think i can do it in under five all right, all right. go for it okay I right. seed the floor. So 
I I watched the the both those ADP movies and they were not too swift. Um, <laughs> and man, we'll talk about those another time maybe. But I I used to I used to have this little blog. I still do some stuff on there every now and then. And I, I can't I ch- tried to challenge myself. Could you come up with an idea that was better than what was going on? Mm-hmm. So my idea was like in year one you do like an alien movie, and then in year two you do a predator movie, and then year three you cross over and do an alien movie, an ADP movie, mm-hmm. and you go back and do alien and then predator, and then in year six you do ADP two. Right. So you have this interconnected mini MCU thing. To my credit, it was pretty MCU. But <laughs> you'd have you would instead of like doing these ADP movies that were just like here was a bunch of characters doing some stuff and some stuff blew up. Yeah. You could actually develop themes over like multiple movies and maybe some characters would jump over and whatnot. So my idea for the the, the first a, the first Predator movie was in the future, mankind is ex- ex- expanded to the stars and there's some military outpost or maybe it's just some kind of science outpost with a military guard. Mm-hmm. And your main character is you know your, your Schwarzenegger dude and he's a uh, he has like his military training and whatnot, and he is on patrol from his like group or whatever. And these predators roll up on his uh, on his crew when he's out on patrols. So he misses them, and these predators kill everyone in their sleep. Oh, okay. And it, there's like let's say there's like four of them, right? And maybe there's five of them, and. The fifth one is like watching the whole thing happen. He's like a couple feet away from Schwarzenegger about to kill him. Yeah. And he sees like, here's the commotion. He's like, oh, what's going on? And from the Predator's point of view, he sees these Predators slaughtering these unarmed people in their sleep. Right. And the Predator's like, these are these are not honorable kills. Yeah, it's like against our code. It's against our code. Right. So he goes to confront, he goes to confront our our the, the Predators. Being like, you guys didn't do it right. I'm fighting all of you, and it turns out they're all corrupt. Uh, and yeah. here's where I couldn't quite get the pitch right. Do the does the predator and the Schwarzenegger character team up to take out the bad guy, the bad predators, mm-hmm. or is it all predator on predator and the Arnold character is like not even relevant? Yeah, just right? kind of caught in the middle. He's just caught in the middle. Maybe right. he's even killed as he's like confronting them, mm-hmm. and it's just like, and the, the, I came up with the idea because. I just saw Apocalypto, and I really right. I Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, flick, yeah, and it yeah, was, yeah. It's a movie that's entirely in subtitles, it's a foreign language that most Americans have never even heard. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe you could do a, a, a foreign language film that's an all alien language, huh? Yeah, that actually would be pretty. That would be a pretty neat idea. Yeah. To have it, um, so how would you do it? Would you have, so I guess we've been introduced to their language, right? With a yeah. lot of straight lines. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of triangles. A lot of, triangles. <laughs> a lot of straight lines. So, I mean, you could have that like playing out exactly. with whatever language subtitled exactly. underneath it or something like that. Yeah, that actually would be kind of neat. Yeah, and you do this whole thing with, like the predator, they're like, we're going to hunt you now. Yeah, yeah. And the predator's like, all right, fine, it's on. Mm-hmm. And like he's like, I, my honor is greater than you, anyways. I'm not. I have to do this because my honor demands it. I don't care mm-hmm. if I if I make it or not. You guys have to die, right? So you get and maybe he teams up. He teaches like the Schwarzenegger character the ways of the predator and and like they're they're setting up like little traps and whatnot. And because Schwarzenegger's been on the planet for so long, he's like, oh, I know. He knows the terrain. Yeah, there's a cave right? over here. And, you know, oh, oh, this this mineral here like reacts to. It reacts to, to to fire or whatever, so we can blind them with this. And yeah. you have all these sequences where it's their wits against the superior numbers. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, you know they finally win. And, they, and I I envision both of them making it out of it, yeah. and then like somehow going into space on like a like a shuttle and interacting with the characters from the prep, from the alien movie and being like, hey, that's a that's a man. We'll, we'll take him, but we're not taking this dude. This dude's an alien, yeah. you know, you know there's some kind of you know, alien species. And having Torsten be like, no, I'm vouching for my guy. Like now we're we're brothers of the hunt now. <laughs> and like you basically yeah. have like a like a like a buddy cop deal where mm. you're an alien or a predator. And that, that was my picture of predator. Hell yes. I think that's a really good idea, man. Yeah. And you know, you actually just made me think while you were describing that, because I, I had forgotten the whole concept of honor. 
in the in the predator lore. Yeah. The idea, right, is like what other uh, beings in the galaxy can we trump? Like, can we prove we're more physically fit or better survivalists? I don't, you know, whatever the yeah, case yeah. is, than these other species. Doesn't it take away from that if they're actually supposedly enhancing themselves with the DNA yeah. of other beings? Where's the freaking honor in that? You're not proving anything about yourself anymore. You're like, I, I mean, I, I guess the same could be said about weapons. Well, you it's, know? it's one thing, but, like, a hunter is supposed to have gear. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's not like, take off the gear, like, oh, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that doesn't happen until the very end of the, of the first Predator yeah, movie yeah. where he's like, this this one I will take hand to hand. Yeah, This yeah. one, and even then he does still use his gear, it's just like a, a close quarters fight. Mm -hmm. Like, hunters are supposed to have gear, I get that. But like when you're when you're adding the DNA thing to it, especially if you're taking it from the prey, mm -hmm. it's like this isn't a challenge to you anymore. Right. Like that super predator, it was a super like they made a super predator. Like mm -hmm. and there was no chance they were taking that thing out. Like it, yeah. it was taking shots that would off the other predators. Right. It was still surviving. How could there be honor in this thing? Mm -hmm. And but it did still try to be like, oh, this dude was a traitor. I had to I had to come and kill that first predator. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that was. That was just to me another failing of this movie. I'll tell you what it reminded me of. In the nineties, they didn't have a Saturday morning cartoon of Alien, but they had action figures of Alien. Oh yeah, right or yep, Aliens yep. or the sequel. Mm -hmm. and they had like they had these animal themed aliens that didn't have anything to do with the alien theme, but they had like oh here goes the this, the boa constrictor alien that like spit acid. Yeah, yeah. Or then he had this like buffalo alien. I think that one actually did have. Mm -hmm. like, they were like, "Oh, let's do that for Predator." Yes, that is true. But it was just one Predator. Not yeah. <laughs> right. Oh man. Uh, yeah. To me, this this was a bad idea executed poorly. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Several bad ideas executed poorly with some legitimate high points that yeah. didn't save the movie, but did make it interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I think uh, I think we had a pretty good discussion about this. Yeah, I think uh, we. I, I get the sense we agree on a lot of the ups and downs of the movie. Yeah. I guess for me, at the end of it, I I came out of the theater having enjoyed myself, yeah. and my criticisms, I like they would pop into my head while we were watching the movie, yeah. but they were immediately well, they would immediately disappear because something really hilarious or something really cool <laughs> happened in the movie sure. and I just forget about it. Sure, sure. Which isn't that shouldn't absolve it. Yeah. I get that. But I did I I did have a good time. I laughed my ass off. So you give it a thumbs up. Yeah, I would give it a thumbs up as long as you do what I did, which was go in and expect garbage. <laughs> I, everything that I read and heard about this movie was it was just toast. Like this wasn't even worth wasting your time with. Which is why I wanted to see it. <laughs> and and you know what? I was pleasantly surprised. I have seen a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't argue with that. Yeah. It's it's fun enough to watch if you you and you and some friends get some beers, or if you're if you're one of our if you're one, in one of our jurisdictions where it's legal to you can buy marijuana. <laughs> it'd be a good one stone, I'm it'd sure. Be, it'd be, it'd be oh good yeah. <laughs> like just if you were just having a a nothing night, and you're like, oh, what can we watch? Well, I never mm -hmm. saw the predator. I think it would have. Right, right. Don't go into this expecting anything more. Like you said, it's it is trash, and you know, be aware of some pretty severe mistreatment of things like PTSD right. and uh, and special needs. Yeah. If you if you can get past all this stuff, I'm sure you can have decent time. Right, right. For me, it's probably just thumbs down. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's going to conclude our discussion. Cool. But you know what? If anyone else on this planet watches this video, other than the two of us. I would invite them in the comments to say what they thought and would they like to see your rendition of the oh, Predator. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. that maybe we get some other people saying that's what we want to see next. You know what? I think what we should do next is is talk about the future of Alien Predator, mm -hmm. Alien Force Predator, and if we mm -hmm. had any other ideas. Huh? I think I'm, I think I had an old pitch for Alien too. Mm -hmm. Well, but let me see if I can dig it up and maybe we'll do a follow up. Sounds good to me. So hey, something something more for everybody to look forward to right. from us. So yeah, that'll be it from uh, Sly and JB. Right and uh, yeah, we'll see everybody next time for 
who knows what garbage <laughs> movie we will we will talk about and review next. So stay positive, and we'll catch you all later. That's it.